Hello and welcome to the Scatterworld channel and today I want to show you guys what it's like gaming without a graphics card in the year 2021 through using Intel's new UHD 750 graphics found on all Rocket Lake CPUs. If I haven't said it enough already, you just can't get a dedicated graphics card, period, in the year 2021. Low end, mid range, or high end, it's just impossible. And even go to low end used graphics cards on the used market on like eBay or Mercari, like the GTX 970, have caught on to this whole GPU shortage and crypto mining boom. And you can't even find like GTX 970s for an acceptable price, which is just horrendous for us budget PC builders because how are we gonna find graphics card solutions for our sub $500 gaming PCs? We can't even get any. And that's where you resort to integrated graphics solutions. And fortunately, as much flack as these Rocket Lake CPUs have gotten, if there's one thing Intel did right with this launch, it's that they upgraded their integrated graphics solution. No longer is Intel using the old Intel UHD 630 graphics, which have been on all 8000 series and up processors since 2017. Intel is bringing over technology from their successful mobile Tiger Lake CPUs with their integrated Iris XE graphics technologies to these new Rocket Lake desktop CPUs. And spoiler alert, there's a difference. <laughs> there is a difference between the old and the new integrated graphics solutions, which we'll get into in a bit. Anyways, to quickly talk about specs between the old and the new, the new UHD 750 graphics out of the box are at a higher turbo and base clock speed. They have more execution units, can support DirectX 12.1, and are overclockable just like the old 630 graphics. And on top of that too, I think this whole situation gets a little bit sweeter because the B560 mid-range Intel motherboards you can get as well for these CPUs will allow for memory overclocking. And this is great for integrated graphics solutions because they don't have dedicated pools of memory to pull from like graphics cards. So they have to pull from the system memory. And from what we've already seen with Vega integrated graphics solutions, having faster system memory will have a direct correlation to more frames per seconds for integrated graphics solutions, which is great. So we can pick up like a B560 motherboard, 3600 megahertz RAM, and be able to fully utilize these integrated graphics solutions if you wanted to, to get the most frames per seconds possible while not having to spend like a lot of money for a Z590 motherboard. So with that said, I went ahead and benchmarked the old versus the new with my 11900K sample. I actually overclocked the UHD 750 graphics just to show you guys what it's like overclocked versus stock as well. And as you can see straight away, the new UHD 750 graphics do pull ahead in nearly everything. In 3 d Mark, the score is a lot higher. In Fortnite, you're getting an extra 30 frames per second stock over the old 630. In Rainbow Six Siege, it's now somewhat playable versus not playable at all on the old 630 graphics. And even in Forza Horizon 4, which I mean, 30 frames per second is still low, but the old 630 graphics are <laughs> abysmal at 18.8 frames per second average. And actually on Halo Reach, if you overclock those integrated graphics and maybe tune the settings a little bit more versus original graphics, you can probably get up to 60 frames per second for some solid 1080p gaming. And the same would actually apply for Rainbow Six Siege if you lower the graphical settings while using the Vulkan API to say low settings versus medium settings, which is what I use. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why the heck would I just use a $500 processor to only test for its integrated graphics? Because clearly no one's gonna buy this to use the UHD 750 graphics. Like if you're probably gonna go down the solution, you'd probably look more towards something like an i5 11500, which will have the same integrated graphics as this, but it'll cost $300 less and only be two cores and four threads less. Well, that's because I didn't know at the time of testing how fast these were gonna be, so I just wanted to go ahead and use the top of the line chip from this Rocket Lake launch. And also I kind of needed to use the 11900K somehow for my video content on this launch. But now the bigger question is, how do these new integrated graphics from Intel stack up versus the old Vega 8 and Vega 11 graphics from AMD's 3200G and 3400G? 
I do know that AMD does have some 4000 series APUs already out and some 5000 ones actually coming up, but you can't realistically get those off retail on the market. You have to go through like AliExpress and even then they're way too overpriced. So I'm gonna be only using the 3200G and 3400G for my comparisons. And either way, these have better integrated graphics solutions than those newer 4000 series APUs, which doesn't make sense at all. So this could be good news for Intel if they can pull ahead in this area. So getting into the results, when we run into any GPU bounce scenarios, so situations where the CPU cannot help out the GPU any further in pushing out extra frames for seconds, as we can see, Vega 8 and Vega 11 are still on top in every one of those scenarios. And they're completely wiping the UHD 750 graphics off the board. In Borderlands 3, this is definitely true. In Civilization 6, on the graphics benchmark, this is, of course, the results. In Forza Horizon 4, these APUs from AMD are actually playable at around 60 and above frames per seconds, whereas UHD is just kind of murking below, even at the lowest of settings at 1080p. And even on Rainbow Six Siege, where I think these results could be a little bit closer if we actually lowered the graphical settings, Vega 8 and Vega 11 are still ahead and playable above 60 frames per second. But if we run into any non-GPU bound scenarios where the CPU can really spool up and make full use of its cores, threads, and gigahertz on the game that you're playing, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. On CSGO, even though the UHD 750 graphics do lose out, you are getting above 100 frames per second on the both stock and overclocked versions of that integrated graphics. Even though the 1% lows were actually quite bad and I wouldn't recommend these for playing that game specifically, it is there to note. But also if we move on to Fortnite, here we actually have a win for the UHD 750 graphics because we're getting more frames per second than Vega on the 11 and 8 graphics on my benchmark map which probably is attributed to the performance mode for Fortnite since that'll really spool up the CPU to fully utilize it since the game itself is running at such a low graphical setting. And then finishing out with Valorant, here it's a little bit of a tie. The 750 graphics are slightly faster than Vega 11 and definitely faster than Vega 8 because Valorant is a very easy to run game and there the CPU can most definitely be utilized all the way since it's not a graphically taxing game to run. One thing to note with these benchmarks is that these UHD 750 graphics are on, I wanna say, pre-production drivers. Because last I checked, the drivers for these UHD 750 graphics have not been updated since January, and it's April. So they could get better with actual driver releases, maybe coming soon which is why I'll be making a follow-up to this video because this is gonna be interesting. So in conclusion, in GPU bound scenarios, so just seeing apples to apples, which integrated graphics solution is faster, Vega 8 and Vega 11 are still faster. But in non-GPU bound scenarios where the CPU can play in part for helping boost the frames per seconds, these new Rocket Lake CPUs do get a little bit interesting versus the 3200G and 3400G. And I think it all comes down to the game. The Rocket Lake processor that I think will be most interesting to look out for specifically to maybe treat it as an APU would have to be the i5-11500 since that's going to be about $220, 6 cores, 12 threads, and has the same onboard graphics as what's on the 11900K. But this does not apply for the 11400 because those use UHD 730 graphics with only 24 execution units. So that's the primary difference between the 11400 and the 11500. So I'll probably produce a follow-up video on just the 11500 on really easy to run esports titles to maybe see if it's better than Vega. But at the moment, these UHD 750 graphics just on their own are not faster than Vega 8 or Vega 11. So with all that said, that is it from my sort of perspective on the Rocket Lake launch. I will probably make a future content piece on the 11600K with a popular, or what would be a popular mid-range graphics card in a future video. But beyond that, I wanna give a thank you to Digital Storm for sending over one of their pre-builds with these new Rocket Lake CPUs, an RTX 3070, 16 gigs of RAM, 
so on and so forth. It was all ready to go. And I even made a TikTok highlighting my reaction to this pre-vault when I unboxed it, which by the way, arrived with no faults. It worked straight out of the box and instantly went to Windows. So with all that said, I wanna thank you guys for watching and definitely check out my other social medias because I got a Discord, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. <laughs> That's all in the description below. And with all that said, this is the Scatterable Channel, signing out.